Someone did something! Really do. Welcome back to my garage everybody. In this video I will be restoring hopefully a little bit of lost power, potentially, definitely some lost MPG and making my van easier to start. What are we doing? We are servicing the van and we are changing its coil plugs. So let's get cracked on with this video. Here we have my 2008 T5 transporter and it has the T5.1 uh, front end on it, hence why it looks a bit newer. Uh, and it is the 1.9 engine and here are all the things we're going to fit today. So we've got some super mobile 3000 oil and the oil filter for it. And then we have a new cabin filter. We have the green box at the bottom, which is the air filter. And then last but not least, we have four brand new glow plugs just there. And I did wonder where my touch up paint was. That's my touch up paint, so I just found something. So we're gonna get the van in the air, lifting the front end up so we can drop the oil out. Here we have the beating heart of our van. We have the air filter inside there. Nice and easy to undo because it's got a couple of clips that we undo. They have the oil filter housing just there, which is again, nice and easy to get to. Actually, I hope I've got the right filter. Do we have the right filter? Do we have a paper filter? I do because it's light. So always worth checking your parts before you start dropping everything in case you need to use your vehicle to go and get a new one. There we go, we have a paper filter. And if you have a housing like that, you've got a paper filter. So, nice and easy. That's obviously where you top your oil up and you've got your dipstick just there to check the levels. Try and show you where the glow plugs are. It's going to be a little bit awkward because the front of the van is so high. The glow plugs are on the front of the engine. So I'm going to try and lower the camera down, excuse any noises, or if the camera hits anything. Like that. Uh, somewhere in the middle of the screen there's like a little rail. That rail is what the glow plugs, like that rail runs along in connection to all the glow plugs, that pulls off and exposes your glow plugs, but uh, from here you can't actually see it, so that'll be an interesting job to do. I've just pulled the rail off of the top of the glow plugs, so that's what it looks like there, and literally the glow plugs sit in there, so we'll get to that job, I just wanted to show you where they were. It's, it's so hard to tell on this and I've got no other way of getting a camera in to show you because everything's in the way There's loads of hand room. You just can't see what you're doing Anyway, let's go and start with the easy stuff like dropping the oil and getting the air filter done So there is the sump and just on that side there is the uh, bolt that you have to remove I do have an oil leak on this engine But at some point this engine will get swapped so I'm not overly comf you're not fussed about it It's not bad to the point where it's dripping everywhere. It's just everything seems a bit damp but anyway, I'm going to get that bolt out, I'm going to drop the oil, and then we can get started with the next part, which will be uh, the air filter. Nineteen mil for those that are wondering. Try and line your bolt up. If you can get two buttons in, get two buttons in, make life a little bit easier. And if you can uh, take your bolt without it dropping in the oven, by all means do it. Like that. I got a bit of oil on my gloves, but uh, nothing major. Now we're gonna let that come out there. Make sure you've got a big enough bowl as well. And the air filter's super easy. I just pulled the pipe off, which is weird to say it's got a clip on it, but uh, yeah, pulled it straight off. That's probably because my van has quite a bit of miles on it. 
uh, and then undone the clips either side and now I can get to my air filter. Just size this box. Um, I can lift this up. Not with one hand. I just need enough room to get the filter out. That's all I need. Come on. Come on. When I put the new one in, I'll be using two hands, that's for sure. Come on. There we go. Use two hands to put the new one in, that's for sure. Which I will do. Uh, there is the old one. Here is the nice new one. In a typical light for light fashion. Come out of the box. There you go. New versus old. And putting it in is just the reverse of taking it out, but uh, use two hands. Lifted the airbox up a bit more to give me the room here. Dropped the filter in that side. Much better. So then putting the airbox back together. It's got hooks on this side that hook into the counterparts on that side. So, and then you use these clips, push them over, put them down with your thumb. There's one on both sides. So, doing it blind. Over, pull it down. Ah, push your pipe up. Most people would undo that clip, but apparently I don't. Matter. Undo it to get it back on, but then yes, that will be the air filter done. And the next piece of the puzzle is the oil filter housing, which you can get a 32mm socket on. It does say that it's only supposed to be tightened to 25 newton meters, but uh, that was more than 25 newton meters. So make sure when you're tightening them up, you only do them to 25 newton meters because obviously they do get tighter with pressure and with how long they've been on the band and stuff like that. Um, that was significantly tight. So once it's uh, off, the oil filter is attached to the top of the housing. And pull it out and then pull your filter out, which I'll show you once I've got two hands to try and stop that dripping everywhere. I'm gonna get a bit of rag. So let's uh, grab our filter, which is gonna drip, of course it is, and then into the rag. So you can see we have an old filter and we have the new filter and they are identical. So always good to check because obviously you don't want to have any issues at this point. It should pull out of the housing like so. Make sure you discard of your filter in the environmentally friendly manner. But for now we'll just be going inside the old box and discard of your paper. With the new filter, you get a lovely new O-ring. So make sure you take off the old O-ring, which is on the housing, mainly because it'll be old and potentially a bit saggy because it's been used to the heat. So get rid of that. <coughs> and make sure you place your new one in the same place you just took the old one off, which does normally have its own specific place. So, a nice clean up, then we go and get our new filter, and the new filter clips in, into the housing, just like that, it won't come out now. On the oil canister type, you would run a bit of oil around that seal, just to help it seal better, and you don't need to do that on this one, but I'm going to do the exact same, so I'm going to get, my, get a bit of fresh oil. A bit of this lovely Moby Super 3000. Dip my finger in it and just run it around that new seal. Uh, 
that just means that uh, it helps give a better seal and you don't get no friction or anything like that when you're screwing it in. And pop it straight back into its home. You hear it drop in and then just uh, tighten up. Wipe off any residue. I should do have a bit of residue of oil that's dropped out. Tighten it up, and yes, it is a half inch setup I'm using, so you need to be careful that you don't over tighten. So, let's get to the point where it's all the way down the threads like that, and then just nip it. Job done. So, I've got the bolt to clean up, it's also a magnetic bolt. So, if you've got any like filings and that to it, obviously, it's bad news, unfortunately, to the engine. This was lovely and clean. Uh, this has a washer built on to this uh, bolt, so it doesn't come off at all. So I don't need to put a copper compression washer on. So I can just go and put this back in uh, when it's finished dribbing. And uh, my bowl is rather full. And it's a bit windy down here. So I'm going to let that stop dribbing, put my bolt back in, give it a wipe down uh, and tighten it up by hand, but rather tight, but not to the point where you're straining to, you know, you don't, you don't want to be stripping the uh, threads in, inside the sump. So it's time to do the glow plugs. The glow plugs are quite small on this van, but they actually go almost that way, almost going 90 degrees to the head. Uh, so if you look just down there, you can see that I've got an extension piece sticking out of a long extension, uh, you know, a long 10 mil socket. And I've already cracked it off. And with a bit of look, there we go. One very old. Very warm glow plug. Now time to get the others out. There we have the lovely new NGK ones. And it's the ones I've took out. I don't even know what they are. They are Bosch. So I removed Bosch ones and I put in NGK ones in. They were the ones that were recommended to me anyway. So these go in the reverse of the other ones coming out. So find the hole where my it's like 90 degrees out and uh, screw them in. This is going to be interesting doing this blind, that's for sure. Right, I'm going to do it and I'm going to show you afterwards. <laughs> I'm going to turn the camera upside down and then you should hopefully be able to see that the pipe's connected back on. Not pipe, but the electrical connect. So you're actually upside down, but you're the right way around on the video. Hopefully somewhere around there now you'll see that everything's connected back on. Uh, and they aren't dead tight either, literally. I, I nip them up. Uh, and then push the pipe back on, so that's them done. So I just need to do the uh, pollen filter, or cabin filter as it says on the box, and top it up with oil. So we have the cabin filter to change. It is located under the dashboard, of course it is. Uh, and there's some bits and bobs in the way. So filter, we need some Torx bits, we'll do some Torx screws, and we have a very small socket. So under here, <laughs> well under here there's supposed to be a big giant plate a uh, big plastic plate which covers all this, which is held in with torque screws. Now, I can see where the torque screws would go, but there I have no plate. So there would be a torque screw just here, here, and here. But turn the camera a bit more, there, there, and there. But for whatever reason, I do not have that plate. My van is quite old. Obviously it's been uh, lost in, in its life. So I now need to undo that bolt and that bolt and that allows the panel filter to drop straight out of there and the sizes of that is a 5.5 mil which i have i'm going to quickly undo that and get it dropped out once you've removed the whole black plate you'll see you have access to your filter so it's just a case of uh, somehow grabbing it Pulling it out when you can get hold of it. There's no movement up, there's no movement across. Oh, there we go. One filter, and you can see a load of leaves and crap dropping out. But uh, it's quite an old filter, that one, unsurprisingly. New filter. 
significantly whiter. How dirty that one is. A lovely side by side shot for you. And then the fitting is just the reverse of what we've just done. It's the same brand that's just come out from Crossland. So what we need to do now is just top the oil up. Everything's been done, everything's fitted. Make sure before you do this, you put your sump bolt in and it's tight. I have done, I've checked. Checked it twice, because I'm paranoid. Now I've just got to try and uh, get the uh, oil in without spilling. And that is an impossible challenge on this channel. So here we go with our uh, Moby oil. I've got six liters of it because it uses five point something. I've lowered the van back to the floor as well. And that's to give me an accurate oil level. I'm gonna put all of this five liter bottle in and then I have the one liter top up to uh, adjust the level accordingly. Oh, see, moving already. It's Filling it. In there like that. Looks so pretty. Nearly all in. spit any that's still technically in the engine kind of in my mind I'll let that oil settle in a minute and I'll do a dipstick test I get some rag and we'll be able to uh, see how much we've got now some of you will notice things are missing in my garage and the back of my garage is ridiculously messy that is because if you've not been following my socials I have now got a unit I'm sharing that unit with a patron Nick you may have seen him before on the channel in his uh, track Volvo or you may have seen glimpses of his 1000 horsepower Supra or whatever other madness he does oh, excuse me um, yeah, so I've moved stuff there and you'll start to see videos from the unit uh, especially the big videos we have, I have planned uh, right, so let's go ahead and put you back and we'll check the level put you there somewhere, wherever you were grab the old dipstick Give it a wipe. Put it back in. And then let's have a look at its level. We're nearly a third of the way up the stick. So I know I'm going to need some more of this. So let's put some of this in as well. I'm only going to put about a third of this bottle in find some of it actually goes in that may be a bit more than a third half that bottle <clears throat> let that run down through the bottom of the engine and then give it one more quick test and then we'll go to fire up when fingers crossed she should start up nicely so quick wipe yeah. quick check just under max, so that was fantastic. Give that a wipe, give that a wipe. Seems somebody, probably Chris, dropped oil everywhere in my engine. Speaking of Chris, you're gonna see him soon in a couple of videos when we go racing. We're going on track. If anyone that's made it this far in the video, we're actually going on a racetrack. We're going to Donington in May. Oh, and then we're going back to Cobra. Awesome. So the last check before you start your engine up. Caps on, obviously your sump's in, otherwise you lost all your oil right now. Your oil filter housing is tight. The airbox is nice and clipped in, that pipe's clipped in. I did manage to push it on in the end with two hands. Uh, for whatever reason, that's not clipped. I'm just below my minimum of my coolant, so I'm gonna check that shortly. Uh, what else have we done? Pollen filter's inside and the glow plugs are all 
connected. So fingers crossed. One cycle in the glow plugs and we should fire up. Also watch the oil light goes out as well. That means you've built up pressure, so you're good. So we're keeping an eye on the oil light as we fire up. Um, but one cycle of glow plugs. Before it was taking me three. Glow plugs are glowing. Fired up straight away. Oil light's already out. Oil light hasn't come back on. Well, I, I think we're on for a win there. That lovely fresh oil around the engine. Yeah, one for a winner there. Sounds healthy too. Sounds healthy. Quick look underneath. You go inside ones. No leaks. We're all good. I've just had a quick trip to the shops in Allen, just to, well, I need to go to the shops, but uh, he runs absolutely fine. He started perfectly. Um, it's a great little job to get your service. You know, it's one thing to tick off my list of things I needed to do. So we've done the glow plugs, air filter, oil filter, oil, and the cabin filter or pollen filter, depends on what, what you want to call it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, make sure you like and subscribe and a huge thank you to my patrons. The links, if you're interested in being my, a patron, will be in the description down below the video. Uh, thank you very much. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye. I'm mending something. Really do. <laughs>